Hello and welcome from beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. You can actually see Kentucky. Kentucky's on the other side of the river right there. This is Paul Brown Stadium. 49ers and the Bengals coming up in just a little bit. I, as is customary, have climbed all the way to the top of the upper deck to give you guys the view that you want to see. This is where the 49ers will be playing. They're warming up about 80 minutes until kickoff here in Cincinnati. And I have a lot of cool stuff to show you. First, we're gonna start with the view and a little overhang here. It's a, just a gorgeous day, by the way, here in Southern Ohio, Northern Kentucky, whatever you wanna call it. I was in Nashville, Tennessee earlier today, flew up, took only an hour on a little prop plane from Nashville here to Cincinnati. I've already eaten some great food and I'm ready for a good football game. The Bengals are seven and five, the 49ers, are six and six. Both of these teams are in their respective playoff chases. And I will now show you the Bengals practice field. Let's go down here. There it is. That opened to 2000 alongside the stadium. Now I'm gonna walk over here toward that bridge and show you where the old Riverfront Stadium used to be. But here's the skyline of Cincinnati. It's a really nice town. They have a cool setup. I have to say it's better than the 49ers set up in Santa Clara because there's actually stuff going on outside the stadium. So why don't we cross over here? I need to find a good row where we can go over and see the Ohio River. But this is all going to be packed out in less than two hours. Fans are starting to come in. Already have some here. We're nearing the 50-yard line, so this is where the all-22 coaches tape is filmed. 49ers, currently you have... I'm trying to zoom in here for you guys. There's Mitch Wisnowski and Robbie Gold warming up with the field goals. But we're going to clear go clear across so we can get the river view for you. Today's game, well, 49ers are now favored by two points. That's because Debo Samuel is playing. No surprises on the inactives for the 49ers. No Elijah Mitchell. We didn't expect him to play because Kyle Shanahan ruled him out on Friday. So I think it's going to be up to Debo today to give the 49ers a lot of that run game and a lot of that rush productivity that they need to deliver a sustainable offensive effort. Debo can hit the outside zone holes as good as a top running back. I mean, that's his talent. He's a natural when it comes to that. Played running back his whole life up until college, really. But even in college at South Carolina, Debo is a hell of a runner. Housed several kickoffs for the game Cox. And, I mean, he's, he's just built for this Kyle Shanahan system. He could do so much. We talk about the positionless skill position philosophy that Shanahan has implemented with the 49ers. Debo Samuel is a guy that can deliver for them when they need versatility to have that offensive spine of the run game. And with no Elijah Mitchell, I will tell you what, they really do need Debo Samuel, and it's big that he's playing today. So we're nearing this end of the stadium where we're going to have a lot better view of the river. That, uh, as I said, is northern Kentucky. That's the state line, the river. And you can now see where the Reds play. That's Great American Ballpark. Those of you who are Giants fans, well, Buster Posey, the recently retired Buster Posey, future Hall of Famer, had a great moment in that ballpark. 2012 National League Division Series Grand Slam off of Matt Latos. That's, that's where it happened. Straight ahead, I could even zoom in for you. Don't mean to cover it. There it is, it's Great American Ballpark. If you go to my Instagram, follow me at Lombardi himself or my Twitter, I walked by the ballpark earlier and there is a nice Pete Rose statue of him diving into second base there that you can check out that I've already posted. So now you can see some Bengals fans tailgating down there by the river. Beautiful. There's the river for you. There's the bridge. And we pan to the stadium. You can see why they called it Riverfront Stadium back in the day. Riverfront Stadium was one of the great old cookie cutter stadiums 
By cookie cutter, we mean one of the stadiums that was able to house both baseball and football. So the Reds and the Cincinnati Bengals played there, and it looked like what a cookie cutter would make, just perfectly circular. It was a master, uh, a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none. So now they have specialized stadiums here in Cincinnati. Paul Brown Stadium for football, built in 2000, and Great American Ballpark for baseball, also built in 2000, which is the same year that the Giants opened past Pacific Bell Park, back Bell Park, now what is it called, Oracle Park in San Francisco. So the cookie cutter generation of stadiums is gone, but Riverfront Stadium used to be like right here. In between where I am, this stadium is, and where Great American Ballpark is, is where the old Riverfront Stadium used to be. And that's where the Bengals, the ones that played the 49ers in the Super Bowl twice in the 80s, that's where they were based. Behind me, you can see where we're gonna be playing this game at Paul Brown Stadium. Now, Bengals history is intertwined with 49ers history, not just through those two Super Bowl meetings, but because Bill Walsh started his NFL coaching career with the Bengals. And in essence, the West Coast offense that Walsh made so famous with Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Dwight Clark, John Taylor in San Francisco was actually originally the Cincinnati offense. The origins go back to here, to the practice fields of the Cincinnati Bengals, where Bill Walsh did his thing. So these two franchises are connected through that. This is where Bill got his start in the NFL. And they're obviously connected to the fact that these teams met in two Super Bowls in the 1980s. We can call them the Chris Collinsworth Super Bowls, even though the 49ers won both of them. The Bengals drafted Chris Collinsworth, who now works with Al Michaels on NBC in 1981. His rookie season ended with a Super Bowl loss to the 49ers. And then Chris Collinsworth retired after a Super Bowl loss to the 49ers that closed the 1988 season. So I'm sure he's happy that this game is not on Sunday Night Football. It got flexed to a 425 Eastern start, not to the late night start. And that's good because this crowd is going to be fired up. As you can tell by the shadows, it's late afternoon here in Cincinnati. So it's going to be dark for most of this game. So these fans who are drinking down there, they're getting liquored up right now, as you can see. And now fans are starting to file into the stadium as well. They've had plenty of time to, to liquor up before this game. It's going to be dark. It's a big game, two playoff contenders. It's going to be a tough one for the 49ers to win on the road. Would have been even harder had they played later at night at 8 p.m. As it stands, it's still going to be one of those games that I think is tough. Downtown Cincinnati is awesome. They have, as you can see right here, that's the ballpark. And this is Paul Brown Stadium. So there's only like half a mile in between the two. And they have a strip of bars and restaurants and you can see people partying in between the two stadiums. It's connected by bars and restaurants and live music. So re really neat setup. Like I said, way better than Santa Clara where the 49ers have absolutely nothing at the stadium where you just had the parking lot and that's it. So downtown Cincinnati is cool. My hotel is right here. There's my hotel, the Hyatt Regency. So it was an easy walk. I made the loop. I made the loop over to Great American Ballpark and then here to Paul Brown Stadium. The 49ers are staying at the Westin. And as you can see, I mean, this is uh, was one of the great old American cities. I don't know if you could firmly say it's on the Rust Belt. I think that's more Cleveland, but it's getting close. We're in Ohio, but you know, Kentucky's considered a southern state. Kentucky's right there. So Cincinnati's on the border of the Rust Belt and the South. And you have the, all these old Art Deco buildings. I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. Culturally, good food. Uh, they have a big German tradition in Cincinnati. They back in the 1800s had a lot of immigrants from Germany so they have that goetta which is this like sausage patty they put on their breakfast sandwiches German sausage with uh, some spices on it I had the breakfast sandwich with goetta today I'm gonna have one tomorrow they have a neighborhood called over the Rhine which is supposedly really cool that I'm gonna check out tomorrow while I work from here I heard that back in the Bay Area you guys are dealing with an atmospheric river again so I'm gonna have to deal with that this week if my flight makes it back in time, but I'm just gonna spend all day in Cincinnati tomorrow. I'm not flying out till 6.30 because I would rather be in sunshine, which is ironic because in December, you'd expect California to have better weather, but weather's great here. It's a little chilly, but I'd rather have the sunshine and I'll work here and I'll eat out of Cincinnati. 
All right, uh, I can't really see any questions because I'm on my phone. I'm gonna flip this around and maybe I can open up some questions. But the 49ers are gonna come out for warm-ups in a bit. As you can see, that's the 49ers tunnel. A lot of 49ers fans down low, as you always see on these at these road games. I'm gonna make a lap around the whole stadium, so maybe I'll go live one more time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of preview content for this game. Check out my Instagram at Lombardi himself, and check me out on Twitter. Enjoy the game, everybody. Hope you enjoy the tour of Cincinnati. And I'm gonna sign off by actually showing my face. Everybody take care. Appreciate you as followers, and the 49ers and the Bengals are about to lock horns in a big one. Bye now.